Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Logan from Cigar Federation on a very special edition of Cigar Chat. I have the one, the only, arch nemesis, Eric, Master Sensei from Cigar Dojo. How, what's going on, buddy? What do you say, Logan? I'm just uh, sitting here enjoying a Monday evening. I'm all pumped up. I'm excited. I don't even know the results myself, and you can... This is true. You can uh, you can verify that for everybody. I purposely did not look because uh, I didn't want to know. I told Logan he sent me the results, but I didn't want to know because I wanted to like you know. Just genuinely like, surprised. Yeah, exactly. Genuinely surprised. I got them both sitting here. So what I'm going to do, Logan, when we get to the point in the show when you announce it, I, I am going to smoke the winner in uh, you know respect to who whichever one wins. Now, I got to say, Logan, uh, I smoked some, several of these, both of these, and uh, they're really awesome. I mean, um, the Fedhead one is aging very nicely, and so uh, you did a good pick with that. It's, it's, a, it's a good one to age for sure. Uh, and then, of course, the Dojo Nation went boom, right? Good right off the truck. So, Basically uh, right off the truck. You don't even have to put in your humidor. Yeah, you know, you smoke it, boom. You just that. smoke it, boom, done. <laughs> That's hilarious. So you know, with the you know with the voting, I mean, first of all, just want to thank everyone who participated in this, I guess, social experiment, this project that we put forth. You know, back in I mean, actually, it was even longer than that. Late September, October of last year, I can't believe it's almost been a year. Mm-hmm. You know, when Eric and I were kind of talking on the phone, envisioning this. I mean, we thought, wow, this is a great idea, but. You know, are people actually going to participate? Are people going to like this idea? You know, is anybody going to even care? You know, is anyone going to care to want to do this? So for everyone who, you know, participated and, you know, spent your hard-earned money on it, participated, had fun with it, we really, really, really appreciate it. Um, it made, obviously, this first project a very big success. So without you guys, it wouldn't have been possible. Yeah, so, was, Logan, it was like, you know, before you go on, it was like the most unique cigar project I think I've ever seen in the business. I mean, I've seen some unique stuff, but for uh, two communities to sort of come together and, you know, pick our own blends and then have a boat and all this kind of stuff. And, it, and, and these weren't just like, you know, cheesy cigars. This is Viaje. This is some of their better stuff, man. Really good stuff. And so, yeah, you're right. Thanks to everybody who bought because, uh, and the guys that didn't buy, you should you should try it out because it's a really cool idea to get to see what the you know different you know tastes are your taste, my taste, and yeah. and not only that, I got dojo guys that said, hey, hey, sorry, Master Sensei, but I like the Fedhead one better, and and I've seen the Fedhead guys post on Facebook and stuff saying, well, I'm a Fedhead guy through and through, but I like Dojo Nation better. So it was really interesting to see. You know, people just being honest and and saying what they liked, and that made it really really interesting to get that feedback. You know. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, and I and I and I will echo that because there, and I'll go ahead and call him out because it doesn't really matter. But one of our ex mods, and he's not an ex mod because he did something bad or he quit, but he had some personal reasons. But one of our ex mods straight up told me was like, "Hey, I want to tell you, your cigar really sucked, but the dojo <laughs> one was awesome." And I've, I had people that I, you know, personal friends, like even outside of cigars, they were like, man, the Dojo one was way better. And then I had people, you know, so it, it was it was nice to see the honesty. And I think that was the unique part because we got along so well and it remained positive and not to be all touchy-feely, but it could have went awry very quickly and it didn't, which was well, very, very, very nice. Yeah, and one thing that we said all along, even at the very beginning, was when we picked our blends, we knew that. Both of them were going to be good uh, because there was some that we didn't pick and that neither one of us picked. And so we knew that these were two, you know, quality sticks and they were really different, dramatically different. Yeah, very different. So on a, on a side note, yeah. didn't, didn't you just celebrate your like 50th wedding anniversary? Well, it was no, I don't want to name the year because I know you post on Facebook, but it's like almost 30, right? 28, yeah. 28. I cannot believe you've been married that long. I know. See, I, I'm old, dude. Yeah, you would never know it, though. I got six kids. I know. I like. 
I like I'll occasionally when I'm Facebook stalking people, like I look at your page and I've you know been following your daughter who's been like singing and stuff, which is awesome. But I was I can't even keep the, your kids straight. There's so many. I can't either. So that's we have that in common. I I just when I go to yell at them when they do something wrong, I usually like go through the whole list of names until I get the right one. You're like, you're Dominic Kennedy, you know, that kind of thing. I can't even keep them straight. So, uh, so you just yell, hey, you, and they all respond. It's like the Brady Bunch. I just start calling them by number, you know, number three, you know, that kind of Do thing. you have a whistle kind of like in the sound of music? I need that. I need a special, I need a special whistle for each one of them. And I blow that special whistle and that, you know, then they'll know. But no. And then no, they know great. to come. We got, we got, I got, I'm very lucky, blessed with six awesome kids. You just got one, so you know you just got one. Long, One's enough, man. You got a long way to go, buddy. You got to catch up, dude. I that's that is a, an epic throwdown battle. You will be winning, and how many <laughs> kids we have? Because I'm struggling with just one. <laughs> she's getting teeth now, and I mean she's had teeth since she was three months old, but she's getting she's like getting her molars and stuff, yeah. and she's just been like screaming like a banshee every night. And dude, it's like a newborn again. It's just it's brutal, it's so brutal. <laughs> Uh, she's really cute. I, I follow you on Facebook too, and see all the kitty pictures. I know, man. I'm such a softie. It used to be nothing but the dog, but now, unfortunately, Truman's kind of taking a back seat to uh, you know all the Facebook niceties. Dude, he's you got like, a cute dog. That dog is so cool. I know, man. He's he's Australian Labradoodle. Yeah, which totally just shows off my yuppiness, you know. <laughs> but um, but no, he's a he's a great dog, and it's I'm really glad too because he's he's kind of a He's a little territorial, and I was a little worried that when we had Callaway, he would, you know, get upset and stuff. But honestly, like, he just, he fought, she's walking now, so he'll follow around the house and, like, he'll kiss her face. And so it, I've, I've really lucked out, man. The last year has been, I you know, definitely a roller coaster, but very, very good and, and very, very blessed in the way things have happened and unfolded. So I couldn't be happier. Yeah, that's awesome. So man. I don't obviously want to go, go ahead. I just said, good for you, brother. Yeah, thank you, man. So we obviously don't want to announce the winner right now. We got to kind of hold on to it. We can't have the shortest ten-minute show of all time. No, yeah, no. But I want to give a I want to give a tease. I'm not going to say who won, and I've I've actually given Eric this little tidbit as well. Is that the winning community? And I'm not going to name which one. Won by how many votes, Eric? Well, you told me before the show, and I was shocked to find out that it was this close. But uh, Logan says that the winning cigar, the winning throwdown cigar, here they are, won by one vote. Who no. One. So because ah. it, because it's that close, who knows what's going to happen? Who knows what's going to happen after this? We might have to have a secondary. It's a hanging Chad situation. Oh yeah, man, hanging Chad. Hanging Chad. I'm going to go to Florida, Florida. To, to get the winning vote counted. <laughs> I know, man. It's back when they used to have punch ballots that had the hanging Chads. But so that's one little hint. So it is it is one by one vote. And it was double, triple counted uh, by KPMG. Actually, no, it wasn't hand counted by KPMG because that probably would have cost like $50,000. Um, but yeah, one vote. So, you know, let me ask you, Eric, in, in this project, you know, once you know we, we we opened up, we sold the cigars. On the on the dojo side, what is one of the coolest things that you saw in the dojo app related to the throwdown? Well, we had a couple of different throwdown contests and had some just absolutely hilarious entries. I don't know if you saw recently. There was one where this guy made this picture and it was like two midgets fighting, and I no. he had my face on one of the midgets and. and I Your saw that. Was the other? It was. That was. It was, it was pretty crazy. awesome. It was I would have to. That's yeah. what I would have said. That thing was awesome. It was hilarious. Um, but I think the the cool one of the coolest things was the fact that, you know, there was dojo guys just flat out saying, "Hey, I, I'm a I'm a dojo nation guy through and through." But I I voted for the Fedhead cigar, and so it was cool that there was like this, just honesty about the cigars, and you know, it didn't seem like people were. I mean, I'm sure there were some people that were just loyal to one community or the other, but there was also, seemed to me, a fair amount of people that were just trying to be scientific and liking whichever cigar and voting for whichever cigar, and I thought that was the coolest thing. 
I agree. You know, I think the best part for me was I'm a, a very competitive person by nature. People have compared me to Kenny Powers, and I get really worked up over a lot of different things really easily and can be kind of a kind of a jerk. And I think the Fed head members enjoyed razzing me every single day about how crappy my cigar was and how, you know, Dojo's going to whip my ass and, you know, all this stuff. And just to get me worked up, you know, and just to see me get caught up in a tailspin about this. <laughs> and I think the coolest thing, you know, was you know, anytime you do a community cigar, it brings everything together. But I think it was really cool to do it kind of cross community and kind of bringing everyone together around a certain cigar. And I'm, you know, it was interesting because you're right. This is kind of the first time this has ever happened. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but I've had a couple of different communities, put quotes around them, reach out to me and say, hey, we'd love to do that. Would you guys want to do that with us? And I was like, well, I don't know, have to talk to Dojo. But I mean, I think it's there's a lot of interesting things that we can do henceforth with this and this being kind of the nogger one. And I don't think there'd be anyone I'd rather do it with than Eric, obviously, and Cigar Dojo. So, Well, you know, one thing we did, we, we made a lot. This for a... For, a, for this type of a project, uh, we made a lot, you know, typically you'll get like, a lot of these sort of projects are like 200 mazos or yeah. 250 or whatever. We did 500. That's a lot of cigars in this, in this realm. And so uh, uh, because of that, there are still some left. We did good, but there's still some left. So if you want to be part of this, you can still be part of this and uh Buy yourself a mazo off the Sigfed uh, store site. If you haven't, voting is over, but it'll still be up for a couple of days. And that actually ties into a really good point, you know, that I wanted to make is that with, you know, everyone who, who came out and supported, you know, I'll just kind of tease it a little bit. As everyone who, who made a purchase, you know, throughout kind of the, the throwdown voting period, we know that, you know, you bought a lot of these cigars on faith, that, you're going to have faith that, you know, these cigars are going to be good, um, that, you know, Eric and I, you know, <laughs> weren't going to steer you wrong. But at the end of the day, you knew that both cigars were going to be completely different. Good cigars in their own right, but you smoke one, you might be like, well, man, you know, I really love the Fed Head or I really love the Dojo and the other one wasn't my favorite or vice versa or however. Maybe you love both. Shockingly enough, another actual fun fact is of the overall percentage of votes, approximately 20% of votes actually enjoyed both cigars equally, mm. which is to me is kind of shocking because I would have never, I mean, you can't get people to agree on anything <laughs> a 10th of the time, let alone 20% of the time. So I think that was a testament to both cigars, but what we're going to do is in the next couple of days, check your email and there'll be an opportunity where if you were really, really dug the fed head, or you really dug the dojo, there'll be an opportunity to buy a, a 10 count Mazo of a specific dojo or fed head cigar. So that way, if you had one that you preference, you weren't in that 20%, uh, you'll be able to actually stock up and actually get that. So, yeah, and you can also get the little four count samplers that have two of each. If you don't want to, if you're not sure about buying the whole exactly. Thing. And those, I mean, we sold quite a few of those. I mean, it was pretty lofty, right? I mean, the, I mean, I remember the dogma, right? was, I think was 200 mazos of 10, right? The Buckingham was about that. So we've got a few extra cigars, not many. So you'll see a couple of appearances, but if you haven't tried it or you want to try it or you want to stock up, uh, it's going to be, you're going to want to do it in the fairly near short term. Uh, yeah, because there will always be something new coming down the pipeline uh, in terms of projects. So yeah, if yeah. you're a big VIA fan, this is a good Viaje cigar, and I'll yeah. be the first to admit, Viaje's been hit or miss yeah. on a, the last couple of years. But this last year with the Jalapeno, the Super Shot, the, the Throwdown Project, both of our cigars, this is good. This is a good Viaje. Yeah, I think so. I thought so, too. And, I, and when we got the samples, you know, first I wasn't sure. I was like, man, I don't know. And then we waited some time, and then we smoked all the samples again. It was quite a process. I don't know what your guys' process was, but we had a we had a sort of a two month span where we were really having a hard time figuring out which way we wanted to go. Now we did like the one that we picked. We did like right away, but and so we were like, okay, this is the one we want right away. 
but we weren't like 100 percent sure so it, we took like two months figuring it out and like we had little round tables we even had one night jordan where we had like um like a, a, a judge and a jury and like guys making you know case for it like a, two lawyers like battling it out oh my that, god that kind of thing because we we just wanted to make sure you know that we were picking the right one and then we thought well okay so we know what we want what if logan and the, the super guys pick the exact same one you know what are we going to do then and but it turned out you guys didn't you picked the the uh, the maduro so it worked out perfectly but uh, it did work out perfectly this wasn't just a fly by night you know really nearly pick we like put a ton we of put some it. thought into it yeah we put some th thought into it we did put some thought and i mean yeah i mean you have more of a panel i mean i i'm kind of a one man show when it comes to this cuz i trust my palate not to be a jerk but there is i will say there is and i won't reveal his name but there is one guy that is in new media or in the media world that I think has just an expert, phenomenal palate. Like someone, whenever I can't pick a note out of a cigar, I talk to this person and I'm like, hey, what'd you think of this? And I just think their palate's like superb. And they can smoke Cubans all the way to, you know, triple quad protocol of Harrow's and they, they just don't care. They, their palate kind of spans the chasm. And I'll, normally when we do projects like this, I'll send a couple samples to this person just to get, you know, their feedback because I know they'll shoot me straight. We've been friends for a long time. And when we both resoundingly picked, you know, the Maduro, the, the San Andreas, I was like, yep, that's <laughs> good enough for me. And it all seemed to work out. So, so Eric, yes. next, next question here. We'll probably, we'll, we'll make people hold on maybe five more minutes before we announce, but yeah, let, we, gotta, we gotta build the suspense. I know, man. I'm horrible at building suspense because I'm like the worst person with secrets. Like, you know, I get someone something for for Christmas or whatever, and I'm like, want to tell them like right now, like instantly. Like, I'm the worst. Like, you don't understand how hard it is this 20 minutes keeping this answer bottled up inside of me. And on top of that, even on top of that, is that when I'm talking through it, when I was giving the oh, you know, well you know, one by one vote, it took, I had to seriously slow down and think like not to name who won. Cause I've done that a thousand times too. <laughs> Cause I'm just absolutely horrible with it. I'm good at keeping secrets. You must be like having like six kids. Like I can see <laughs> how, how bad it would be is if you let the secret out to one and then all of them found out through the, the kid, like telephone grapevine. But I could see like you and your wife have to be like pretty much lock boxes. Yeah. I could see that. Yeah, we're, we've developed a good secret keeping strategy. So good secret keeping strategies. That's awesome. So, you know, Eric, in you know, let's just say you know we look into the future. You know, will there be another throwdown? Eh, who knows, right? I mean, the future. Who knows what the future holds? As my friend Evan Pittman likes to say, at the end of the day, all we are is on a rock a big rock circling a big ball of fire. We don't know what's going to happen, right? But what would you like to see out of another throwdown project? You know, where would you like to see it go? Mm. Would it be, you know, with a different community? Would you like to see it be, uh, you know, a Royal Rumble with several different communities? Would you like it to be, and I think this would be personally cool, and this would be my vote, would be the My Father throwdown. One of us go with Pete, and then one of us go with John Huber. Mm. I think that one would be awesome. Yeah, that sounds like it. Did. Now, in the in the questionnaire for the this voting, that correct. question was asked. So you probably have some insight as to what the public wants to see. I wonder if you know some of that can shed some light on what could go on in the future. Absolutely, and that's where I was actually going. So. I, I was kind of surprised. I mean, I wasn't surprised by the answers. I'm pulling them up right now. You know, I wasn't totally surprised, but at the same time, I was a little surprised. Um, you know, we put in put in some, you know, several options for people to choose. Um, but, you know, when it came down to, you know, who people who people actually picked. Um, and this is another one. Well, I'll, I'll come back to that fact. But, you know, overwhelming was crowned heads Ooh. you know at 60 percent you know crux came in at 10 percent, which I, I love everything crux is doing 
But one that really surprised me is I threw this one in, not that it's going to happen, but I just kind of wanted to see what people thought. But Foundation Cigar Company, Nick Melillo, right? Like only 10%, actually less than that, like 7%. I would have been surprised. Like people wouldn't, people wouldn't have gravitated towards that. Well, I think like, a lot of people might not be familiar with that yet. Yeah, that's probably true. I guess a lot of people, you know, aren't maybe aren't familiar with what Nick's done. I mean, yeah. if you think Liga Pravada, think Nick. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much what he did the last he, like five, seven a years. Special blend on the dogma. Yeah, exactly. I mean, basically, it was Drew Estate's master blender for the last what seven? Yeah. Well, actually, no, it was longer than that. It's like twelve years. Um, and then we got a lot of others too. So this a couple of them weren't surprising to me. You know, a lot were, you know, Tatuaje, Roma Craft, Drew Estate. A lot of, you know, you would think kind of the the culprits, right? Um, definitely a lot of Tatuaje, definitely a lot of Caldwell as well, a lot of Drew Estate. Um, so I wasn't really surprised surprised by those. But, you know, crowned heads, who knows, man? I, I've i been on John for a while. I mean, I'll throw this. as This is your throw down, John. It's, I've issued you the challenge. Let's do something. The ball's in your court, my friend. <laughs> That's all I got to say to that. So, you know, so who knows? You know, I think it would be cool to do a throwdown like that. I think you would be cool to do, you know, a throwdown with, you know, you know, several different communities. I mean, I think there's a lot of ways we can take this, you know, the project in the future, and hopefully we'll be doing something, you know, in the future if we can, if we can get it worked out. So, Yeah, yeah throwdown between um, – uh, one manufacturer, but two different, like you, like you said, crown heads, Tatawahe thing. That would be pretty cool. I think it would be very cool. I think it would be something that I would definitely love to make in the future. Pete and John, you have been called out. Exactly. So uh, let it be written, so let it be done. <laughs> so another thing I thought was really interesting from some of the votes is one of the questions was, you know, are you a member of, you know, Cigar Federation, Cigar Dojo, both or neither. Hmm. And I would have really expected, um, you know, people to kind of gravitate towards one, right? Because, I mean, yeah, I'm, I, I'm on, I'll be honest, like I'm on Dojo, I'll play around, but like I wouldn't consider myself a member. Do you know what I mean? A member means you're like active, at least in my opinion. So I thought there'd be people, you know, in one camp or the other. But actually, 55% of the overall respondents actually were both. Interesting. Which I didn't realize there was that much crossover, but apparently there is, which I well, thought was very interesting. It's good to know. It shows that people are, uh, you know, willing to just sort of hang out wherever and not be too, uh, you know, snobby towards one or the either. <laughs> one or the either? Yeah. That's yeah. A word, right? Is that a word? That was a sentence, wasn't it? Dude, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm so freaking tired of the baby. Like... I we literally my wife bought freaking groceries um, today, and like I was starting to put them up or whatever, and and we bought some trash bags too because we're out of trash bags, and I literally put the chicken or whatever she bought on in the actual pantry in the trash bag rack, and then put the trash bags in the fridge. Dude, that's 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 the level I'm operating on. Like I'm operating like a level above zombie right now. <laughs> And I mean, the fact that I'm even like even moving around is amazing. So what are you smoking? Um, I'm not smoking. You know, it's funny. Like a lot of people are probably going to give me crap for this, you know, and I mean, oh, I've smoked a ton of dojo nations and I've smoked a ton of, of fed heads. Right. And it's one of those things where if I smoke something over and over and over again, like I just like to mix it up, especially with IPCPR, you know, that just occurred, you know, about a, less than a month ago, actually. Yeah. So I've been smoking a lot of new stuff from there. And one cigar that I've been just enamored by, and I'd be curious to hear your thoughts if you'd smoked it, but is the Atelier oh. La Mission. I mean, oh, my God. I just, so good. I haven't had it. What's it like? It's, I mean, it's a San Andreas wrapper, and it, it's strong. And, but it, it's definitely got a, a kick to it. Everyone who smoked it has been like, yeah, you know, this is a really strong cigar. But I think it's a little different than most San Andreas, right? Where I think the Sig Fed is more kind of like chocolatey, cocoa y, you know, it's got a little hint of sweetness. It's not completely overpowering. It's got a ton of flavor. 
where this, on the other hand, is kind of more in the pepper bomb kind of arena, you know, a little, it's more of the bitter type chocolate. It's definitely got a ton of strength and I freaking love it. Mm. Like it, it's, I wouldn't say it's the best cigar I've smoked from IPCPR, but it, it's definitely was made with me in mind. Right. Yeah, I've been, and it's uh, pretty I awesome. I have one of those, but I haven't got around to it yet. I've been stuck on the, uh, the Crochet 512. I've probably smoked like Dude! 300, 300 of those things. Yeah. Isn't that great? That's what I was going to smoke. Dude, for $6, cigar's yeah. freaking amazing. It is. I know. It is it is amazing. We were, we were trying to compare it to things the other night. And I, I, I'm not gonna say that it tastes like exactly like this or anything, but it's for some reason similar to me to a Cohiba Siglo. I just I was gonna say a Cohiba is what it tastes yeah, like. Yeah, it has that sort of flavor, and it's six bucks. I, mean, I know. The other night, I was just I was sitting by my humidor thinking, all right, what do I want to smoke? I had a couple kind of bad cigars in a row that I didn't like that much. I was like, I need a cigar that you know got to get me back on track, something I like, and that's just the first thing I, I always gravitate towards for the last two months. Actually, since um, since Cat's Fest in San Antonio, I've been smoking those pretty much nonstop. It's like my favorite cigar right now. I love that thing. It's, I mean, I'm just really surprised because first of all, Santana is a cool dude, oh, but yeah. most of his stuff. I mean, I like the golden. You know the golden bear or the golden blend h 10 years like all of his stuff's really good yeah but most of it's i mean let's put my beater on the bush i mean it's not a cheap cigar his other stuff i right. mean it's 9 10 12 14 dollars it's expensive yeah but for him to come out with this the 512 which is really funny because that's my area code <laughs> um which i don't even know why it's the 512 but that's my area code but and i know he doesn't live in austin texas but yeah. um for him to come out with that good of a cigar and I've smoked it in the morning with tea. I'm gonna probably smoke it tonight after this heavy hitter. It's you. It, I doubt there's too many people that would smoke that cigar and not find some find solace in them, right? And find something enjoyable. I'd be very surprised. Be very, yeah. very, very surprised. What else? What else did you think about IPCPR that you that struck you uh, coming out this year? Things that you liked or didn't like, or brands. Um, Surprised with or you know we had our an ipcpr the uh, ipcpr recap show i think it was last monday where we had coop and by man's puff on so if you want to get more detail watch that but i think the thing that was i wouldn't say surprising for me but was it just felt very blah this mm -hmm. show it is very blah like you know in vegas you know everyone's up they're partying you know, people are smoking cigars anywhere you go. And in New Orleans, I think it was partially the function of, first of all, if you live in New Orleans, you just like, you're just like a sadist. Like, <laughs> or no, it was a masochist, the person that likes to take pain. You just like pain because it is just brutally humid there. You go out and you light a cigar. After about a third of it, it's so soggy. It tastes like just, you know, just, just nasty, just nasty, wet, gross tobacco. And it's like the sun's beating down. You're sweating bullets. And I think part of a function is that because there's nowhere to really smoke. I mean, yeah. yes, there was a few places. But in Vegas, I mean, everywhere is free game, right? right? And the other thing is I think that people at the show, I mean, it just it just felt like it was kind of like, okay, well, we're here. And, you know, there wasn't that, that buzz or that electricity that I'm, that I'm used to in the show. And other than, you know, Saka, you know, new thing, which isn't shipping for like four months and then, you know, Nick's new cigar, which I smoked, which is very good. I, I didn't necessarily fall in love with it or nut over it like a lot of people have, but it was a good cigar. Um, other than that, there wasn't a whole lot of like wowing type stuff. Yeah. At least I, for my opinion. We thought that too. We were trying to figure out like, um, it seemed like every year at IPCBR, there's always like one or two like, you know, things like sticks or, or something's coming on that everybody's excited about. And, didn't, it didn't really have that feel to it. You know, there no. wasn't uh, something that, like, whoa, we got to get that or whatever, you know. And you're right. I, I, I tend to agree. Now, that being said, we had a really good time. We found a really cool little bar that was, like, right by our hotel called the Howlin' Wolf. Okay. And we spent, like, 
every, every night second there, in the until late. I mean, like three, four in the morning sometimes, just hanging out with cigar guys, you know, Terrence from Quesada and a bunch of other guys. So it was fun, but I'm really looking forward to getting back to Vegas. I am very much looking forward to getting back to Vegas. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. And the other thing I, I think, I mean, I wouldn't say that it was annoying, but I mean, this will be my fourth, this was my fourth trade show and I've heard it every single year. And it's just a very big conflicting information is like IPCPR, the group, you know, the organization will announce this is the biggest trade show we've ever had. Yeah. More exhibitors and more retailers are here than ever. But then when you're on the floor with manufacturers and retailers, all you hear about is, oh, my God, the show is dead. There's no one here. No one's buying cigars. Yeah. And, like, it's kind of a broken record. And I'm kind of like, kind of want to do my, I mean, I'll never be able to do this. But I'd love to be able to do my own analysis and actually get the data and look at it. Because it just, I, I, I haven't been able to pin it down. Is it that the trade show floor, which, first of all, to walk across that stupid yeah. trade show, Oh, literally was like a mile apparently my cabbie said and i don't know if there's any truth to this horrible. the convention hall is the longest single hauled freestanding structure in the world and it spans 1.2 miles you know um that's funny because the first day in fact i saw you we saw you guys that's and, the wrong door yeah we were like that's like right by our hotel right so yep. hey, convention hall is right there. We'll just walk on down and we'll go. And we saw you guys. We said, "Hey, hey, guys, how's it going?" Blah blah blah. And then we walked off to to go to the convention hall, and we walked. And, and you walked, walked, and you walked, and you walked. Walk. It was horrific, man. I couldn't, Logan. By the end of that show, my hips. I could barely walk. I'm not kidding you, man. My hips were killing me. Dude, could, it was brutal. I could barely walk. Dude, it got to the point where. I mean, I'm a big proponent of Uber, and yeah. Yeah. like I was like, drop us all at a hall at H. Yeah. Like yeah. I was like, I'll pay the extra couple bucks. It's worth it. Because I mean, it's just so long. We Ubered the entire time after that first day. Every I wouldn't. Day. I don't blame you. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that that layout was bad. Now, as far as the show goes, I saw it as one of two things. I had every single cigar guy I talked to. They would say one of two things. They would either say, oh, my gosh, this is the worst show I've ever or seen. Or the best. Or they would say, we're killing it. Like the Espinosa guys, they were killing it. I mean, their booth was packed. All the time. At, all the time. And there was a few other guys like that. But then there was these other cats that I would talk to, and they would just you know, say, nobody, nothing. This is terrible. So it was really hard to pinpoint. But I'd say overall it had to be – down as far as the retailers showing up because I mean I heard some numbers and it seemed very low to me the numbers seemed very right. low. I mean I don't know I mean I'd like to be able to validate the numbers and you know I, I think the thing that is different than other shows and I heard this from a lot of different manufacturers they're like what's weird about you know the New Orleans show was that they were like and I heard this from Danny Moya specifically and several others too but he was like, what's weird is all the business that I'm writing and all the orders I'm placing are on the trade show floor. They're like, last year, probably 20, 25% of the orders we did were actually at night at the circle bar or at the bar mm -hmm. or over dinner or whatever. And yeah. it was because people went out, smoked the cigars, had some time to relax in a non, not saying it's like a pushy sales environment, but it is a sales environment, you know, had some time to think about it and, you know, place their order. And I, the other thing I heard a lot was, that the retailers that were there weren't kicking tires. Like it was like, I'm there to buy freaking cigars and they yeah. bought cigars. It's yeah. just, if you weren't on their list of people who were, they were going to maybe buy, maybe they didn't buy from you. But, and I, and I agree that I heard a lot of people, some people were like, I won't name boost, but when I, I overheard, you know, they were like, they did their totals from day one or two and the show's four days. And they're like, we sold more in day one and day two of this year than we did all last year mm. through all four days. So I think it was all relative, right? So, yeah. I, I mean, I think everything's a little bit relative, but I don't know. I mean, what is it my favorite show? Meh. I mean, was it as bad? I don't know if you went to Orlando or not. I wasn't a big fan of Orlando either. I'm just glad we're going back out to Vegas. Yeah. Now, just imagine if you were, say, Padron or 
one of these guys that's I don't know. Can you can you imagine what those guys spend to set up like the my father booth or the Pajon booth? I mean, it's I don't even know what the number is because I don't do that, but I'm assuming it's a ridiculous amount of money because the the booths and things that they set up are like little miniature cities, and so basically. To only have that amount of retailers there had to be frustrating when you're dumping, you know, tens of maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars into these setups. I mean, a lot of the booths, I mean, if you're a big guy like Drew Estate, because Drew Estate had the same booth and got a new design with the Brooklyn Bridge and all that last year. And, I mean, I don't know. They never, No one's ever told me how much they spend on their, their booth. But I've got to think it's in severals of tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. But just to rent the floor space, I mean, is in the tens of thousands of dollars. So, you know, it, 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 you're right. Like, I mean, the de- you could literally get lost in the general booth. Oh, yeah. I mean, you could yeah. go in with a couple of ingress and egress points. And if you got turned around, they spun you around a couple of times blindfolded, you wouldn't be able to get out. <laughs> like, it's that big. <laughs> Yeah, it's it was, definitely a sight to see. That's for sure. Yeah, it was crazy. And hey, uh, just real quick, um, speaking of events, you mind if I say a couple of events that are coming up? No, and then that I'll do a segue into my couple we, event we're doing now. So go ahead. Okay, cool. So th- these aren't our events, but just some events that guys should go to. Rocky Mountain Cigar Fest is this weekend, and it's turned into a really, really good event. It, uh, about four years ago, Rocky Mountain Cigar Fest was a joke. I would never recommend anybody go there. But in the last couple years, it's turned into a really good event, and there's like 2,000 people show up for that. Really? Yeah, it's huge. So that's this Saturday. It's in Broomfield. So if you're anywhere in the Rocky Mountain region, uh, I recommend you go there because it's really good. Everybody's there. Tatawahe is there, Drew Estate. I mean, all the biggies now, they're all there. And then in um, September, we're going to do California Megahurf, which is one night on a rooftop uh, in L.A. Is and that the, dock? Yeah, it's cool. And the next day, it's a yacht cruise um, in, off of Marina Del Rey Harbor. So uh, a couple of cool events coming up. So Colorado in this weekend, which is the 22nd of August. And then there's that really cool California Megahurf, which is September 11th and 12th. But um, both of those are really neat events. And I don't know, do you like events like that better, or do you like IPCBR? And what, what sort of stuff do you like to do? Um, I was about to say, all I kept hearing when you were talking about the California Megahurf, all I kept thinking was this prestige worldwide, like, you know, Cal- Catalina Wine Mixer. Um, I don't know. I mean, honestly, there's a, I don't go to a lot of events. I mean, um, you know, I mean, I love IPCPR, obviously. And, you know, I'll occasionally go to the local shop and they have someone come in. But for as big as Austin is, it's not a huge cigar culture. I mean, Roma Crafts here and there's a couple of manufacturers from here. But, you know, there's not a huge cigar culture here. So, like, there's maybe three or four shops to support 1.5 million people, which is kind of kind of low, actually. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it just depends. Like, I'm kind of, you know, hit or miss on events. Right. And. And here's my my unvarnished perspective is that I have not like sponsored an event. Like I know you've had you've went to events and had like booze. So I've never had that experience. I can't really comment on that. Like what you guys did with cats and stuff like that. So I can't really comment on that. But from just a guy, you know, cigar nerd attending events, you know, the reason I go to events is I mean, I you know, I know most manufacturers, right? Like I've been running cigar chat for shit, you know three and a half, four years. Like there's not too many, not, not too many people I don't know, but there are people that I don't know that I've never had on the show. So the events for me are times that I get to, you know, talk to the people like Espinosa and others that I have a good relationship and hang out. And then there's people that I don't know that I want to introduce myself to get their business card, you know, try to cultivate a relationship with them. And I just feel sometimes that events are that they're looked on more as like kind of a trick or treating type thing where, you know, here's your cigar, get out of my face. And I won't name, the person who, but let's just say, I would say in terms of volume of production of cigars, it's, I mean, it's not Drew Estate, obviously, but, um, uh, let's just say a, a couple of brothers, I was there and I've never had them on the show and they do a ton of cigars. And 
I was like, okay, I want to sit down, you know, I want to meet this person, you know, let's have Bob on the show and stuff. And I was at Cats one last year with the year before. And I was like, hey, you know, my name's Logan, you know, I do cigar chat, I do this. And they literally like got up from the booth, went and got a beer, <laughs> came back, and then just kind of like tossed a cigar at me and continued their conversation. Oh, and for me, like, I was just like, I, I just can't believe it. You know what I mean? I was like, what if I was like your no and I what I am not their number one fan, but like what if I was their number one fan, right? Or like what if I was like a fanboy of theirs, or like you know, I the, my first cigar I ever smoked was from them, and I wanted to like, all right, you know, wanted you to sign a box of cigars when my daughter was just born. Like it's just from a marketing and just you know customer relationship touch point perspective, I'm like it's just so crappy, and I feel like a lot of that is at bigger events like that you don't i like the events more at the shop where it's kind of more of a one-on-one -on -one. maybe there's 30 guys and you actually get some one-on-one -on -one time and hang out and that kind of stuff and i definitely prefer that better than the bigger events but that's that's just one guy's opinion yeah there's not a lot of smaller i mean colorado especially denver isn't a big cigar mecca either so neither one of us live in a big cigar mecca and uh and we do get, you know, your events that come through and stuff like that. But that's why I'm so encouraged about Rocky Mountain Cigar Fest because it, it really sucked for a long time. How long has it been going on? Yeah, it's probably five years, I would think. Because I remember Drew went, what was it? Their first year was like, what, two years ago? Yeah, I think so. And I remember when they started promoting it and it was a big deal and it got way big. Yeah. There's so. some events like leading up to it too, you know. Okay. So like that makes it kind of fun. But yeah, I mean, two thousand people—that's that's a that's not shabby. That's a pretty big. That's a pretty big thing, and it's in a gorgeous location, like this uh, interlocking hotel up in Broomfield, which is you know you can see the mountains. It's oh, really, cool. really cool. So, so I'm really looking forward to that. I'm psyched that that's this weekend, and hopefully we'll get to see some uh, some cats out there that you know are from the dojo or cigar federation or wherever. If you're in this area, you should go and say hi. And check it out. Exactly. I will not be there, but Eric Eric will be there with Dojo in his in his posse. Yeah, because it's four. their backyard. So. Well, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's cool. I mean, and one thing I know that kind of well, doesn't tie in with you, but also it's you can definitely I want you to talk about is that right now SigFed's doing our we're doing we've done a, a fundraiser, you know, yeah. every summer after IPCPR. You know, the last two years, it's been with Project Mignana, which is Brian Berman out of the Dominican. You know, we've raised money to help them build their nutrition center. I think we raised enough money. I think we raised about $15,000 over the last two years, you know, with, you know, donations from cigar manufacturers, our community, others. Um, and this year, we kind of switched it up. And I'm really excited about what we're doing is, you know, we have the opportunity to work with Drew Estate and the Drew Estate Charities. So we're raising our goal is to raise $10,000 to build five houses in Esteli uh, with Techo. But it lines up where we're also having a cigar safari trip, which I know you guys are, which is coming up. We'll talk about that in a second. But ours is in February, where we're going to be able to, normally the trips are you know Sunday to Wednesday or Wednesday to Saturday, just how they line out. We're actually going to be going down Sunday through Saturday. And for the first three, two and a half days, actually building the houses that we raise money for with cool. all of the Drew Estate team because they're going to be fumigating the factory during that time. And then we'll do our cigar safari after. So, you know, yeah. it's definitely for a great cause. I mean, obviously all your money goes to support and it's going to be really cool to be able to see where the money goes, you know, build houses and you see kind of the impact that the money has on the, the community of Esteli. So we're very, very, very excited about that. Yeah, I saw that. That looks really cool, man. Good job. Well, thank you. Thank you. So you guys are doing a cigar safari too. I know it's it's right around the corner, right? It's like in November. Yeah, November. So uh, that's quick, man. I know. Yeah. So it'll be fun. Is it uh, a good season? Cool. Is it? It's they. They grow tobacco in November, don't they? Yeah. So it'll. it'll that's what I, I thought. It'll be. It'll be fun. It'll be interesting to see how it goes. And uh, so we haven't done it before, and they kind of bugged us a couple years ago to do one, and I just couldn't do it at the time. And they wanted me to do it because I I have other jobs I do like you do. Right, of course. Yeah. So, but this time in November, it worked out perfect for me because I don't have NASCAR going on and stuff. So I was able to pull it off. So we're looking forward to it. That's awesome. So make sure if you're a Dojo member, make sure to sign up. Have you already sold out the trip? Uh, so what we did, we 
we've been trying to make sure to get like actual dojo members, you know, right. like a million. People. It's hard to do, man. Yeah. And so, uh, so we had a huge amount of interest and we've been just going through those. So now we're down to one left. We're trying to get that one last spot filled with, with somebody that, uh, you know, we have, we have, like I said, it's, it's not because we, you know, you know, or picky or anything. It's just that, Hey, when you do a cigar safari, there's a million guys that want to do it, and you don't want it to be just some guy that's just doing it just because he wants to go on a cigar safari. We want it to be, you know, the dojo guys. Agreed. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, so yeah, so we've been picking and choosing and being kind of picky, and um, we got a really great group together that we're really excited about, and we're holding off this one spot, and we'll see where it goes. That's awesome. No, I mean, it's not, it's not really different. When we had our trip last year, and it's really no different. I and mean, we kept it open to Cigar Federation members first. And we had several people that weren't Cigar Federation members or weren't the most active. But, you know, the biggest thing for us was, you know, let members, you know, have the opportunity if no one wants to go. The other people that are invited that are from outside places. And I think there's a couple people from Dojo and stuff. is just to make sure that they would fit in with our group. Because the last thing you'd ever want was, you know, you have like high school, right? You've got your your group of sig fed people over here and you have your group of people over here, you know, for everyone to have a good time, which we obviously did. So, right. and you want to reward those people that are, that are, uh, you know, loyal to your community. And cause it's, it is a dojo safari like it for you. It's a sig fed safari. So, you know, you want to make sure it's guys that are, you know, cause there's going to be a lot of banter probably going on. And it's like, oh, you of course get guys that are really integrated into your community. So to, I'm really looking forward to that. It should be a ton of fun. That'll be cool. Yeah. So we've got about 10 minutes on the top of the hour. So yeah, let's do it. We want to announce it here. Okay. So I'm yeah. going to get them out. You just want to do it. Want to knock it out and get them out. All right. Rawhide. I'm going to do whichever one is the winner right now. So you're going to do it. All right. So without further ado, and people watching, uh, hopefully you're paying attention at this point. So had quite a few different, uh, had a, quite a few votes. So everyone who voted, we had voting open for not quite a, about two weeks, uh, received several hundred votes um, for this. And like I said before, is that the winning community only won by one vote. And Eric does not know who won. I don't. And the list was double checked, triple checked, rechecked. Even had my wife check it, who's an Excel master. So, without further ado, the winner of the, I guess it would be the first annual or the first ever throwdown between Cigar Dojo and Cigar Federation is. With 41.1% of the overall populist vote, Cigar Federation. Oh. Slow on, clap. Man. Slow clap. I mean, be, dude, one vote, man. There's got to be a hanging chad somewhere. Now, dude, I know, man. I'm telling you, I like, first of all, first of all, I mean, it, it's freaking awesome. I was expecting to get blown out of the water and you know, just get ran over. And the fact that it was within one vote, I think is a testament to oh, yeah. how good both cigars were, how much the communities participated and it could have went either way. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, one more vote either way. I mean, it kind of changes the direction. You know, I think that, you know, I think there's, there's room in the future for us to do, you know, cool stuff and you know, eliminate the hanging chat. So, uh, congrats, man. I mean, one vote. I mean, well, I, I would, would be dancing around in my boxers right now, but it's one vote. We're light it up. It is good, man. Good job. It was a great cigar. Yeah, dude. I mean, you guys, like I said, it could have went either way. And the fact it was this close, I mean, it just blew me away. Like, I thought that I had screwed it up. <laughs> doing the count so <sighs> by one vote man that's you can't ask for a, a tighter battle than that that just means that both cigars were awesome 
So uh, congrats, guys, for the big win. And uh, if you haven't got these yet, you ought to pick some up. because You should pick them up. Everyone who, who purchased and all of that, watch your email in the next couple of days. We'll be doing something cool where if you have a, you know, a favorite or you want to pick up another one, we'll be doing, you know, I probably out of my, my personal coffers, I'll be giving someone a little bit of an extra discount yeah. just because we're, we have a few left. We want to, we want to move on to our next project. So we'll, we'll open up the coffers. We'll give everyone a little bit of a discount and just be watching for your email in the next couple of days and we'll do something cool. But otherwise, man, it's been, it's been awesome. You know, yeah. it's been, I, mean, I can't believe it's been going on from the time we launched it till now. It's been almost two and a half months. It feels like it was like a day. I think we made history with this one for sure. Well, I mean, I'll take history. This and now like Stogie that. Geeks wants to challenge me. <laughs> then I'm like, well, I don't, I don't know, man. It's one of those things like you do you, do you challenge or do you just keep the title? You know, if you've got the belt and you don't challenge, you're always, you're always the world champion, you know? Mm. All right. Yeah, if you start, if you get into another fight, you might lose. You don't know. Exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and everyone on Sickfit right now is in the chat, like talking crap. They're like, "Oh my god, I'm so glad Logan we won because Logan would have been such a pissy mood if we wouldn't have won." And it's true, man. I'm so type A, super competitive, but you know, it was good. It was a good time. I mean, from now, I mean, from when we started talking about, it, it's been almost a year, so. Yeah, it's nice to see the culmination of the the final voting and the cigars and everything. It's been awesome. Yeah, we pulled it all off. We had some bumps along the road. We started a little late. We did, but uh, it all worked out in the end. And uh, the product was way cool. The marketing was cool. The cigars were good. They were uh, the right price. And uh, Andre came up with you know a good blend for both of us. And so couldn't have been better. I agree. I agree. So good job, Logan. You you won you won the you won the fight. I won the fight. You know, it was it was we both kind of fell down on the mat at the same time and you just fell like a second before me and that was about it. And we both got wrung out. So, you know, with that being said, Eric, any final thoughts or comments before we, we wrap it up? Yeah, well I'd just like to thank everybody who, who played along and uh, thank all the dojo members and the Fedhead members that they got involved with this because it was kind of interesting. You know, this isn't one of those ones where it's a, it's a, a totally easy sell because some guys are like, well, hey, I'm a dojo guy or, hey, I'm a fedhead guy, so why do I want to get five cigars that aren't that? So there was, you know, this sort of like, how is this really going to go when we do it? And so uh, I'm just really thankful for all the people that, that did buy and get involved with it and the guys who tried it because uh, – we made history, you know. We made something totally unique, something different that nobody else is doing. And uh, you know, I love making history and doing things like that. And it was, it couldn't have been with, uh, you know, another, you know, community like you guys. It's just like, sort of like ours. So I'm just real thankful for everybody that participated. Absolutely, man. I couldn't have said it better. I mean, we're just, you know, very excited that we got to do it, and you know, looking forward to doing other stuff in the future, and just. You know, we know that there's a lot of cigars on the market, and we just appreciate everyone who, you know, took the time to spend their hard-earned money, you know, on the project and to work with us and follow along uh, and just be a part of it. So, I mean, I couldn't be happier, and that's it, man. I'm a, I'm a lost for words <laughs> for once, yeah. I guess. Now, when it's over, you know, you can run around the neighborhood with your belt. I know, man. The streaking. The big belt, you know. So exactly. Well, that'll be in private because I'm trying to keep it classy San Diego. <laughs> All right, man. All right, dude. Well, appreciate it. So everyone really appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in and watching. Really appreciate, you know, everyone, like I said, spending their money, being a part of the project from Dojo and SigFed. And until next time, Eric, you know, wish you and Dojo guys the best of luck and we'll see you on SigFed and, we'll, and then all our Cigar Federation members. We'll see you guys on Dojo and just take it easy, homie. All right, brother. We'll talk to you later. All right, dude. Yeah.